Hello, um, I'm Peter Sanchez from Decimo at the Standard Hotel in London. And we've been nominated for Best Interior and Best Breakthrough at the GQ Food and Drink Awards. I'm here at the moment in Casimir, what's in Bristol. So what I've been up to since lockdown, I've had a baby. So I've had a little baby girl called May. I've enjoyed spending time with the family, time to reflect on the restaurant and what we're gonna do when we go back. And also having a bit of time just to cook at home while it's been really nice. And today I'm gonna to show you how to cook an incredible Baja taco. What we've decided to pair it with is the incredible and iconic Dom Perignon. The first time I ever ate this taco in Baja, I was just blown away by it, by the simplicity. So straight away when I knew that they had batter in the mix, I was like, okay, perfect. We can do this, we're, we're British. We know how to do battered fish. So first of all, we're gonna take the actual cod itself, already de-skinned, and we're just gonna cover it with the salt. This is just gonna take out a, a little bit of the moisture because it can make the batter go quite soggy. So I always like to salt my fish first of all, place it in the fridge. And then we'll just give it probably about 50 minutes to an hour. Um, if you're in a rush, it doesn't matter. Like you could just give it a little seasoning, um, go straight with the recipe. Uh, but I recommend to do that first because that's one of the biggest jobs. And the next one is how to make the masa. One of those ingredients what are quite hard to get hold of, but I think you can find it online. Kind of like corn, but it's not sweet corn. It's called maize. What we want to do is just add that into a bowl. Uh, we need to rehydrate it to bring it back to life like a dough. So we add some water into it. Um, we give it a little mix. It seems, first of all, like it's really, really wet. But before you know it, it starts to go into this kind of crumbly, it almost reminds me of like a, a pastry, what you would use. Take a little ball, roll it together. As you can see, if it crumbles like that, it needs more water. So I'm gonna add a little bit more touch water to this one. And as it rests, also, it's gonna start to hydrate more and more. So you're gonna get more of a drier consistency at the end. So you wanna keep that in mind. So I just take a bit of clean film. Um, pop it in the middle of it, place it back in the bowl and just leave it out on the surface just to rest. And this takes normally an hour to get the right um, resting time. So for the next thing we're going to make the batter for the cod. So what we're trying to do is create a, a really crispy batter, um, completely similar to, to fish and chips. Flour first, add that in. Um, you want to use a pinch of dried yeast really it's just there to help crispen the, the batter and make it extra crispy. The next thing is some beer, uh, important ingredient, a good good Spanish beer or a British beer if you can get hold of it. So this is about pouring about 125 grams in. Um, and then we're gonna crack an egg, but we're only gonna use the egg white. And then you just wanna pour the egg white straight into the bowl. And we wanna start giving it just a little bit mixed. So if you ever see that it's a little bit dry, your flour is a little bit different, to me, the consistency should be um, a little bit thickish, but not too thin. Just add a touch more beer to it. And just finish it with a little pinch of salt. Now I like to rest this in the fridge for around an hour. The idea is that you get it super cold and then when you drop it into the fryer, it's got more chance of being nice and crispy. So I'm gonna pop that in the fridge. Next bit, we're gonna shred some lettuce. Great thing about this lettuce, the iceberg, is it's very crispy. Um, so it just helps enhance the crispiness. So just shred it down into layers like this, what kind of look a little bit of a mess. And then I just roll it up, but not too much. You don't really want to break it in too many places. Trim off the end and then just go into little shreds like so. And really you want this to be as fine as possible. It just becomes more easier to build it at the end. So you could just roll it up and it'll stay together. Um, so the thinner you can shred it, the better that will, that will be and the more lettuce you can get on it. And to be honest, you can use loads and loads of lettuce. Right then, next one is actually making um, the tortilla. So the base for the taco. For me, making tortillas is a real special thing. Um, there's a lot of heart and there's a lot of soul what you can put into it. Trust me, it's all worth it because at the end you just end up with these lovely fluffy light um, tortilla shells where you just fill them with anything and they'll just be incredible. Right then, so you want to take the masa, a little handful, normally it's about 25 grams if you want to be a zat if you didn't know how much, but it depends on the size of your taco press. Um, I've got a little small one here because we're on lockdown, I found it quite hard to find um, a large taco press and the other ones in London. 
The key to this, and something what I learned in Mexico, is to use plastic bags. Um, the thinner, the better. You can keep using it time and time again. But you want to take kind of like, cut yourself two big squares, enough to fit over the actual taco press. You just roll that into a little ball. You pop that onto your little piece of plastic. Push down a little bit, then lay it on top. I always tend to go right at the top of the taco press. Otherwise, you, you, when you go to press it, it just press all over the handle. And then just put the top on and gently just squeeze down. And then you can always have a little quick check. So there we go, you create a circle of masa ready for your tortilla. So the next bit is actually cooking it. What we want to do is just peel off the top layer, um, leave that to the side because you keep reusing that again and again to make your taco. And then you just want to pick up the bag, roll it into your hand, really go careful not to damage it. And then just roll it directly. So you're just going to cook it for about a minute on one side or until it starts to come up from the sides. So like this, and you just turn it over. Lay it back down, go for another minute, and then you press in the middle and you give it a little push and what you will create is like a little air pocket in between. And that'll just give you that slight little lift. Um, if you don't get this, it's not the end of the world. Um, it's a home taco in the end of the day. It'd still be nice, um, but that's the way you would make a traditional um, perfect tortilla. Once the taco's done, um, you want to take a little container what's also got a sealed lid on it. So we're just going to place that inside with the other tortillas place the lid on, and then the whole steam process is gonna happen now. When it comes off the pan, um, it's, it's got like a little bit of crispiness to it. When you put it in there, you get that real kind of flexible, delicate, soft taco shell, what you, what you want. Uh, so next step, take out the fish, what you salted earlier. Um, now what you wanna do is just place it into a bowl of water. It's just cold water, just allow it to sit there for about two to three minutes, um, just to remove some of that salt. Just remove the fish. Place it onto a paper towel or a cloth, just to really kind of drain out the first bit of water. And then place it onto another plate with some paper and just let that rest by the side for two seconds. So next I'm gonna grab my batter out of the fridge. So you just wanna give it a quick stir. Take your fish, unwrap it. As you can see, it's quite lovely and dry now. You wanna cut it into just like little portion. So honestly, it doesn't need to be perfect. You're gonna know when the fish is cooked by the color of the, the, the batter when you're actually cooking it. Uh, once it's nice and golden, you always know the fish is cooked inside. Get yourself a plate, grab some flour, and then give it a little seasoning. So you wanna be, be quite plentiful with the salt. The most important thing sometimes if people forget at home is to go quite heavy on the seasoning. Um, that's why normally restaurant food, sometimes flavors and everything takes it out a little bit stronger because we've we've added that little bit extra seasoning. So don't be too shy. Pepper into that, slight little mix. And then just coat your fish into it. The frying part of the fish. Um, I always kind of work in a system. So we've got the fish there, the batter here, the fire there. And make sure it's at that 190. If you don't have a deep fat fryer, don't worry too much. Um, grab yourself a pan, fill it up with some oil, test the temperature if you can with a probe. If you don't have a probe, then just little bits of batter. If it starts to just go, shh, sit, starts to sit on the top and bubbling, then you know you're at that good temperature. So what I wanna do is just go straight into the batter, get a nice coat in. This is the messy part. Little tap on the side like you were gonna do a traditional fish and chip. Give it a little swirl and drop. So what you want to do is just give this a little stir as well as the fish is cooking, um, just so you're evenly binding the outside of the fish because it has a tendency to just want to float to the top and without turning it, it will just brown one side and then the other side will be raw. These kind of take around about yeah, five minutes, six minutes. Really, you're just looking for a really golden brown outside. All right then, so as you can see, now it's starting to get that lovely, lovely deep golden color, all nice and crispy. That's exactly what we're looking for. All right then, so we're at the final stage of building the taco. So we're gonna take our tortilla. We're gonna take a little touch of mayonnaise. Um, so this could be a store-bought one. Um, it don't need to be um, homemade. Uh, we wanna put a little bit of the tomato. So you wanna use your hands for this. You don't wanna worry too much. We're gonna put a little bit of jalapenos. And then we're gonna go with the fish. So the beautiful crispy fish. We're gonna go with a touch more mayonnaise. 
and you're just going to spread it across the top like so and then from there you take the shredded lettuce what we have and we really really try to create some height on top tacos can be quite flat so what i love about these is they're like quite high so when you get it in front of you you're like wow and then finishing it off with mayo so this is mayo going into a piping bag um, and it's a bit chefy, but if I don't show you, then you're not gonna get the full uh, decimal experience. So we basically pipe over the top of this and this helps for when we're carrying it as well. So it almost like gives it a bit of stability. And to be honest, it looks quite cool. Finish it with a little dash of smoked pimenton on top. So this is like the Spanish kind of like red pepper, smoky paprika. -y. And we're gonna go with a little touch of salt on top as well little bit of lime by the side so I just recommend that to squeeze over the top um, just before you're about to eat it. So here we have the Baja Taco from Decimo at the Standard Hotel in London and what we've decided to pair it with is the incredible and iconic champagne called Dom Perignon and for me the the kind of fattiness of the batter and the fish the acidity in the champagne, the way it cuts through it. Together, they actually make such a perfect, perfect combination. Who would ever have thought champagne and tacos would go together, but it really, really, really does. Honestly, you've got to try it. Oh. Here we go. I forget how good this is. I miss this.